He is in charge of the development and support of the technical platform, securing the quality of the customer services of the third largest Bulgarian bank. Apart from his vast experience in card payments, he is also an investor in a few startup projects. Welcome on stage, Svetoslav Moldovansky, Executive Director and Board Member of First Investment Bank. Hi everybody, uh, in our best times we process around four to six transactions per second. Uh, this is trying not to be dwarfed by Visa. <laughs> and, uh, but all the time we try to do our best uh, and to provide the best for ex customer experience for our clients. So today we will speak about uh, cloud-based payment, mobile payment. and. Uh, So, in order to get legit uh, about the cloud, we should uh, at least explain why we think it's cloud-based payment. Uh, so, the very big difference here is that uh, the secure element, which uh, do the whole stuff uh, with the cryptogram in the course of the payment, uh, is somewhere in the cloud. It's not anymore based on the phone. Uh, so, uh, in order to uh, be sure that it's officially in the cloud, uh, all the communication goes through internet using standard uh, security protocols. And uh, uh, we have just two entities, the issuing bank and the service provider. So of course there is an application which is on a mobile device uh, and so on. Uh, so. Let's uh, talk about uh, why in the cloud. Actually, uh, mobile payments are not news anymore, or it is supposed to be like this. However, uh, we don't see uh, re real market penetration of mobile payment. We as a bank suffered for the last five years trying to do this. Uh, we have one pilot, successful, with totally obsolete phones. So it never flew commercially. So uh, actually uh, the, the biggest problem was uh, the approach and uh, the uh, secure element uh, which uh, uh, should uh, store the card data and uh, uh, do this uh, magic uh, when the payment uh, commences. And uh, let's see uh, what were the traditional approaches. We have uh, three options. We had three options. Uh, uh, the first one was uh, to place the most common, to place the mobile payment appl application on the UICC, the MNOs, the mobile network operator of UICC. Uh, the other option was uh, to use uh, the device secure element or to use an external external SD card. So let's get in a uh, little bit more details uh, uh, in each and every approach we had. Uh, so the first one, UICC. As I mentioned, this is operated by the MNO. And uh, here comes the first big restriction. Uh, in order to share space and to play to place uh, a mobile payment application on the UICC, we need uh, a second security domain on the chip. Uh, this means that uh, uh, the chip should be pre-initialized with second security domain. Uh, the MNO should share the keys uh, with uh, either TSM or the bank. Uh, and uh, there should be a process of uh, over-the-air personalization of the chip with the payment application quite complex, I don't know how I remembered all this stuff. <laughs> uh, and uh, the other one is that uh, uh, I mentioned MNO, issuing bank, trusted service manager, three parties, 
very complex uh, projects, very complex coordination between the parties. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, here are too many uh, parties running for the price. The small little uh, interchange fee which comes from the payment. So there are these are more or less the restrictions uh, related to this approach. The next one, uh, mobile payment application on the secure element, uh, which comes with the device. This is uh, maybe a better approach or this is uh, the big hardware vendors trying to enter the payment market, uh, like uh, Samsung uh, placing their secure element uh, and uh, offering these two big players uh, to uh, put their payment applications or whatever they want there and uh, pushing out the MNOs out of the picture. Uh, or this is as was considered in my opinion by the strategist. However, uh, there is a small problem. Uh, neither bank nor the TSM speaks directly to a hardware vendor of the size, for instance, of Samsung or LG. So uh, usually the communication channel goes through the MNO and uh, here we come with again with the struggle to whitelist the payment application for access to the secure element. So more or less it's hard to be realized. Uh, usually uh, for the time when you ma manage to negotiate a batch of phones which has listed, uh, whitelisted your applications, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, model will be obsolete on the market. And uh, the last uh, approach, uh, mobile payment application on uh, SD card. Uh, actually, this is quite affordable. However, uh, the big problem here is that uh, again, we have uh, some kind of offline uh, process, uh, how to provision the card to the customer and uh, these days in my opinion uh, customers got totally spoiled they don't want to wait they want to have things immediately and uh, uh, without uh, getting offline so this is and the other one is of course uh, not all handset uh, support uh, sd slot uh, so why in the cloud? Actually, all the drawbacks of uh, aforementioned uh, approaches uh, uh, are avoided. Uh, having moving the secure element in the cloud, uh, we have widest possible range of devices acceptable uh, for the payment solution. Uh, the product. Uh, the, the implementation is uh, very fast. Uh, actually, time to market is almost uh, nothing because uh, uh, the developer of the mobile application sh should have embed a library uh, which talks to the service of the Android, application, uh, Android operating system. And uh, the other prerequisite is uh, the, the phone to has uh, NFC interface. Uh, so uh, the other one is that we have just two peers, uh, the issuing bank uh, and the service provider. No other parties are involved whatsoever. And finally, uh, we could have totally online experience for the customer we will see later uh, with, uh, I'll uh, break down the process uh, in steps. Uh, and uh, the other good uh, moment here is that uh, the schema is so simple and open that uh, onboarding of any kind of uh, retailers, MNOs uh, is uh, really easy. It's just a matter of negotiations, no more technicalities, no more joint projects. So. Uh, let's get a little bit technical. Uh, 
So my idea here is to speak a little bit uh, about the technology, to give you the main concepts of the technology, uh, and uh, to explain why this is secure, uh, why this uh, could fly, and why it's simple. Uh, so let's start with a bit of history. Uh, we should give the tribute uh, to uh, the guys, the founders of Simply Tap. Uh, actually, they came with a brilliant idea uh, to cut off all the unnecessary parts of the chain and to uh, put uh, the cloud, uh, the, the element, uh, secure element in the cloud. Uh, they made this in 2012. They they had a mod of uh, uh, of uh, Android operating system, and uh, since KitKat 4.4 uh, version of Android, uh, this is official service available for everyone. So uh, this guy made this possible for us. Uh, here is uh, what's interesting is the response of uh, the major network operators. Uh, I mean Visa and Master uh, on uh, uh, the big uh, huge event for mobile uh, in Barcelona in 2014. They said that they are working over the technology, over the protocol which will solve the problem of uh, wide usability of this technology. And 10 months later, uh, s they announced uh, the first uh, uh, official uh, project which uh, was successfully completed. So in less than 10, man 10 months, we have a, a working protocol and uh, this made uh, this uh, payment service uh, available for wide exception and implementation by just by anybody. Uh, because uh, right now you can write your own application if you uh, have access to a bank to provide you a service uh, uh, like issuing, you can start your own card payment, issuing uh, your own card. Uh, and uh, this could be uh, processed by Visa and Master. Is a little bit uh, futuristic. <laughs> However, let's go back to the uh, major processes uh, involved uh, in the payment in the cloud. Uh, so, first one is card digitalization. Uh, card digitalization is the process when the uh, card is moved, uh, card data are moved uh, to the cloud, uh, stored there securely, and uh, available for. Uh, Next process, provisioning of limited use cryptographic transaction keys. Actually, this second process is uh, the breakthrough which made possible to get out of the uh, out of the secure element based physically in the device. Uh, actually, this limited use cryptographic uh, keys uh, allows for splitting of uh, the building of the cryptogram for payment in two phases. Phase one, generation of keys, sending them to the phone, and phase two, uh, processing, uh, uh, using this key, generating uh, a cryptogram and uh, completing successfully a transaction. Uh, so the cloud secure element actually is doing what I already described, this uh, two-phase uh, key generation. and. Uh, Trusted service manager here is uh, uh, just a party uh, which stores securely, securely uh, the card data. Actually, it's outsourced process uh, where, uh, uh, where uh, which has a PCI DSS certification. Okay, so card digitalization in details. Uh, the customer just uh, uh, says that uh, he wants a card, uh, this uh, request goes, uh, the card is issued in by the issuing bank, uh, sent over the internet to the service provider, uh, then uh, 
uh, the information about the uh, issued card is sent to the app. And uh, uh, finally, the user should, uh, the customer should retrieve in a secure way the PIN. Of course, this is done according to the recommendations of network operators. So the limited uh, use key provisioning, uh, according to uh, risk uh, policies of the bank, uh, some, of, uh, some number of keys is stored on the uh, device, uh, and uh, this allows uh, to have a transaction, successful transaction in situations where we have uh, a big network latency or we have uh, uh, no connectivity at all. Uh, with security perspective, I would like to say that uh, these keys are pushed to the phone. Are no, uh, they are not uh, requested by the phone. They are pushed uh, to the phone, uh, which means that uh, many in the middle attack is impossible. And the other one is that these keys are uh, signed in a manner that allows only uh, to be used on this device. And if these keys are hijacked somehow, they could not be used on another device for conclusion uh, a successful payment. So, of course, finally, the payment transaction, we use such a one a single use key uh, to generate uh, the cryptogram. Uh, we do this uh, by host card emulation. Uh, this is uh, uh, an activity which represents uh, the phone along with the uh, NFC interface as a physical card, and that's it. The rest of it goes in the normal way. The acquiring part of the network is no change at all. So, more or less, this is what we try to do. And finally, in very short, because my time is over, uh, what are the uh, benefits? Simplified approach, huge market penetration, no need for the device certification. Actually, I think this is the beginning of the mobile payment. Thank you. <laughs> mm.